Okay, here's the clear dome off the resin 3D printer. Um, as you know on a resin printer, it, it printed on the build plate this way, which means the first layer that it sticks to the build plate is this, and then it builds down. So the very last thing that it puts on the plate would be this end. Now because I wanted this to be a clear dome, I couldn't print it with supports in any way, and I couldn't print it with a hole to let the resin get out. So as you work your way down, resin does build up inside this cup. In fact, it was about a, a quarter full when the print was all done. And because it's clear, as it's finalizing those last few layers, the light starts curing a little ball of it in the end because it can see all this resin that's in the inside and the ultraviolet light gets to it, so you end up with that. Now when it's hanging on the printer, it looked totally clear. I mean it was water clear because it was still just covered in resin. As soon as you took it out, as soon as I took it out, cleaned it in alcohol to get all of it off, it was then fogged. It you know, looked like a bathroom window that's had the, the frost spray put on it. Completely fogged, no matter how much you cleaned it. Um, so I went ahead and cured it and then gave it a couple of coats with a uh, a spray can clear coating, UV protection and that sort of stuff and it kind of cleared it back up a little bit. Uh, I mean if a person wanted to spend the time on it I suppose you'd, you'd sand it with super light grade paper and then give it some more clear coats and get it back clear again but if I was going to go to that much work I think I'd just go ahead and vacuum form one. <laughs> you know what I mean? At any rate the point is it worked and if it was any other part other than a clear dome you, would, you could put holes in to let the resin run out so that it wouldn't collect and make that one defect. Or you could print it with supports in such a way, you know, up this way with supports, and the resin would never collect there in the first place. But being a dome, you don't want any of that stuff on there. And then you're going, well, why do you want a dome? Well, the whole reason I wanted a dome... And I'm moving the camera so you can see what it is I'm talking about here. Yeah, it'll be kind of at an angle. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit or something. This is a video. Maybe if I go full screen, it'd be better. Rick 100 on the uh, on YouTube does all kinds of interesting projects, and I always like to follow what he does. You guys should too. I will put links down below to this project and once you're there you can subscribe and follow the things that Rick likes to do as well. At any rate he was working on a, a single motor steerable pin walker robot. I've done these in the past too but I've never done it in the same way that Rick decided to do it so I thought it'd be fun to build since he was sharing the files and um, make one for myself and also modify a few things because hey, you know I like to do things my way. I like to we all like things a little bit different. So I took Rick's files and that's what this dome is going to be for, for the top of the, the Robbie type head. And one of the first things I did is I went ahead and modified the body so I could put the standard slide switch that I like to use in all my projects on there. And the second thing I did is I don't like the built-in LiPo battery type things. So I punched a, a hole into the back of the body file and added a, a plate that mounts in the inside so it could go in with two AA batteries. Then I decided that I was going to control mine using the, uh, the little Coke can cars. Originally when these came out they were called tabletop racers but these days they're normally referred to as Coke can cars and they're a little remote control car. You get this control that they charge on and you can drive them around. The nice thing about them is the electronics that are in there are all digital so they work really well and you can drive up to two motors forward and reverse because they have the drive wheel and the steering. Well the steering can be another motor if you want or it could be lights or sound or whatever. And they also come with lights. There are going to be two friend headlights and there's going to be a tail light. So I decided I'd go ahead and add the lights to my build. So I put the, uh, the headlights here so when the robot's walking forward those will be lit. And I put the tail light here so when it's uh, walking in reverse the red one there would be lit. And then uh, Rick had on the top a little fitting where he was using an infrared control which he likes to use. And I decided I'd just print this little red dome piece and stick a flashing LED in there. 
So there, there you have it. All the little guts would go in there, and uh, the dome. <clears throat> then of course just should fit right in there, and it does. Not completely clear, but certainly good enough. In fact, the frosted look might uh, add to the mystery of it all. So when it's on, I have the blinking light on the top of the head, and the robot's just waiting for commands. The commands, of course, come from this, so this should be the walk forward. Maybe I should be behind it like this, or like this. So there's your walk forward. As you can see, the light, eyes and the lights light up. Then if I push the walk backward button, everything should shift and it should build a spin. Well, I didn't mean walk backward, I meant turn. And there you have it. Nice radio controlled pin walker that you can uh, steer and drive around. And if you want to know how uh, Rick's clever system works in there, He's using uh, ratchets and 3D printed gears and stuff. The link to his uh, video that I mentioned earlier will show you how all that good stuff works. So, like I say, you should follow his channel. It's interesting stuff. He doesn't have as many followers as, as he deserves. And uh, here's my little version of Rick's single motor, single motor steerable pin walker. Rick 100 on YouTube.